Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Woodstock, Georgia, it's time for Cherokee Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Welcome to Cherokee Business Radio. Stone Payton here with you this morning. And today's episode is brought to you in part by Alma Coffee, sustainably grown, veteran owned and direct trade, which means, of course, from seed to cup, there are no middlemen. Please go check them out at MyAlmaCoffee.com and go visit their roastery cafe at 3448 Holly Springs Parkway in Canton. Ask for Leticia or Haria. <laughs> Leticia or Harry, ask for Leticia or Harry and tell them Stone sent you. Hello, Harry. We're glad to have you sponsoring the show, buddy. All right. You guys are in for a fantastic treat. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast community pastor with First Baptist Church of Woodstock, Mr. Doug Whitney. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, delighted to, man. I've really been looking forward to having you on the show. Very specific focus that I want to make sure we cover. And my guess is we'll probably talk about Woodstock uh, culture in general because I'm so excited to be living, working, and playing here now. Uh, but the reason that we're getting a chance to visit now is uh, while I was stalking the community before I became a resident and Holly and I moved here. <laughs> I noticed, and I didn't know the rhythm at the time, but I think it's maybe first and third uh, Tuesdays. I, I noticed this 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 police car like blocking off the road, and I noticed all this activity over at the tent, and it all has to do with this uh, meals for Woodstock. Can, can you tell us a little bit about this program, mission, purpose. Uh, yeah, give it, give us the skinny on that. Yeah, well, the um, back in March of twenty, you know, twenty twenty, when the uh, kind of world shut down with a pandemic and we were having a good relationship with the city of Woodstock and the Woodstock PD and the chaplain of Woodstock PD, Ron Ansball actually goes, attends first pass Woodstock used to be on staff there as our, uh, our, our guest services director and the chef at vengeance, it was Italian restaurant in Woodstock, a uh, chef, Michael, he just kind of realized you know, they were, they kind of had to shut down the business a little bit. They had to go to a limited num- number of hours because the businesses weren't, uh, you know, people weren't out eating. They yeah, were coming. Okay. So he realized, well, yeah. I've got this facility. I've got a kitchen. I've got two days off. I need to give back to the community. So he reached out to Ron. Ron's a big patron of his restaurant over the years. Ron reached out to me. I met with Chef, met with the city of Woodstock, uh, Cody Thickpen, assistant city manager in the city. And just kind of came up with a dream vision of saying, hey, well, how can we – give back, how can we use their facility to provide meals for those that are needing food? And so at, at the church, at First Baptist Woodstock, in March, April, May, June, we usually give out about 25 boxes of food a week out of our uh-huh. food pantry. But March, March, April, May, June of the pand- early pandemic, we're doing 300 boxes a week. And so we knew there was a need in wow. the community for food. Chef saw a need. He had resources. So we started to say, let's do it. So we met on August 18th of 2020 was the first time we did a Mills for Woodstock distribution. Now, the cool thing about it is I'm all about collaboration with the community, other churches. And so there's five churches involved. There's First Baptist Woodstock. Oh, that's good to yeah. hear. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Allen, Allen Temple, AME Allen Temple, right here at Woodstock, Vita City, right down the road. And then the Way Methodist Church, uh, Pastor Andy Rogers in the city of Woodstock and Vincenzo. So it's a collaboration and it's yeah. been a collaboration since the beginning. So we're all involved, all supporting it. We get some food given to us. We got some food from Delta um, six months ago. They had some food that was just sitting in the warehouses that were going to go bad because they couldn't serve because they weren't flying at the time. So we use that food. Um, Chef buys his own food sometimes. We buy it. We just get donations given. And so he prepares all the hot meals in his restaurant on Tuesday um, with his staff. And then we hand it out on that Tuesday afternoon every other Tuesday. So August would be one year. And so we just decided last time that we're going to go to August for sure. They reass- reassess the situation. So that's what we've been doing. Well, I have to wonder how many folks out there, um, or am I the only one, are as clueless about this challenge. It would have never occurred to me that um, not having enough food would even be a challenge, I don't know, within 100 miles of here. Yeah, there's there's a lot of, uh, we, you know, kind of the, the phrase is food insecurities. Um, there's a lot of families in our community. And I know when the when the pandemic hit, and when I heard the schools, I had two um, students, uh, sons in high school, this is their senior year, 
But last year, when I heard of immediately that the schools were shutting down, I immediately knew that there's going to be several thousand students in this county that won't have food anymore. Because that's that was their good meal of the day. Yeah, they have breakfast and lunch at school, and that's when they wow. eat, and they don't eat on the weekends. And so, under the school system, even enacted a quick kind of process to take food to the communities in March, April, May, and then they continued through the summer mm-hmm. last year. So the food the food needs real in the community. People don't have enough to eat, um, and it's, it's right around us. It's just right down the street. So, and sometimes you kind of learn and realize that it actually it really doesn't matter so much what it looks they look like on the outside. Even the houses they live in, in the nicest nicer. Um, communities still have people in those communities that are suffering that don't have enough food, don't have enough money to supply food for the families. So, yeah. So the execution of this program, you began to speak to it. You've got chef and his team in there providing the labor, doing the, doing the cooking. And then you've got people, um, donating food in, in, in some cases. And then what is the process for giving it out, collecting it like a, um, yeah, walk us through what happens if, if, like, if I'm aware and I'm not, but I sounds like I need to get that way of a family or two or whatever that could really use a little bit of help. How, how do I get plugged into that kind of thing? Yeah, we um, originally to get the word out about them, we didn't want to do it. We didn't want to do a mass kind of marketing, like let everybody know, because then you will have people show up that may not necessarily need it. So we kind of targeted right. certain communities, mobile home communities in the area, um, targeted the senior citizen, senior adult community uh-huh. in the area, yeah. um, some foster families that we know of in the community, um, the, the, in the school systems, the Woodstock High School, Middle School, Elementary, we targeted their, their counselors that know the students that would well, normally that makes sense. Okay. be with free and reduced lunches that way our right. family program that need it. So that's how we kind of targeted specific people that can need it and um, have the, you know, have the needs for the food. And so the process is, you know, we get the food in. Chef may order it through his distributor. We may order it through our distributor. Um, we have a kitchen, a full uh, two full time people on our staff at church that do food oh, and okay. cook. Uh-huh. Um, so he prepares it in his kitchen, and then we have the group of people show up on Tuesdays at three thirty. We start packaging it up, bag it up, and people pull up. We hand it to them, and you can show up one person for the family to get as many as they need in the house. Um, we have one foster family group. That's over in the, um, the east end of the county. They have 30 foster kids in our house, and they wow. come They come every time. They get 30 meals for their kids. So we average, I think we're average about 280, 290 meals every other Tuesday. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, but, yeah, that's what, that's what happens. Yep. All right. So how can a business, an individual, or another little group that um, is probably going to be more effective – kind of collaborating with you than going out and trying to start their thing. How can they plug into this? What's the best way? Yeah. So we are definitely praying for and asking for more support. Um, the two things we need are people on those Tuesdays and then funds, you know, money for the food. Um, we can get some, if somebody has resources that have free food available, they know somebody, okay. a food distributor that has, they have X amount of rice or uh, vegetable sitting or meat that's sitting on a the shelf they know about. Okay. We can get, get our hands on that we just need the resources to be given to us because we have the process in place it, it works it's a great process right. we just look always looking for the food and then the uh, the manpower we don't need a whole lot of people there on tuesdays you know 10 or 12 people come and help give out the food package mm-hmm. it up but uh yeah so that's somebody asked me this two weeks ago what they can what they can do and on the city of woodstock's website and in, in woodstock there's a giving link there for mills for woodstock so they can give straight to it so that all that money goes to buy. So you can give cash. You, you get, give it, cash. And, yeah. And that's cash. a great way to help. And it, you're Absolutely. not duplicating effort. And, it, and yep. it's one Absolutely. less thing you guys have to worry about. Definitely. So my experience, and I've lived here almost a month. <laughs> my wife, Holly, and I moved here from East Cobb. And uh, we're sitting right now, I mean, like a, a mile from uh, from our home and, and very close to where these meals are, yeah. are, are given out. My experience so far has, uh, has been th- this place really is a community in every sense of the word. People try to help each other out in this regard. Uh, people that don't even know me very well are trying to help me get this studio off the ground. You know, and find mm-hmm. good guests to come in, to find prospective yeah. clients. Um, not that I've never seen this in my work life, but uh, I don't know that I've ever seen it at, at this level. Am I just being myopic or am I, have I really stumbled into a community here? No, I think Woodstock <laughs> is a great community. I've lived here my whole life. Um, my parents moved here when I was a little kid. I've been in Woodstock. I've kind of moved around certain areas. I don't live in the city of Woodstock, but I'm right mm-hmm. three miles away. Right. Um, 
but I've lived here. I've seen the growth, seen the transformation of the town, of the city, of the people. I think it really does have a great community vibe for sure. And people, I think, look out for each other. Um, even during through the summer months when things were, were kind of hostile and kind of negative around the country, I felt yeah. the city of Woodstock, even talking to the chief and other people in the city, it just didn't have that same feel here. You know, we had disagreements and everything, but this, in the city here, the, the, you could have a conversation with people without right. going anywhere negative. So I think here, I think it's just the culture that's in this area is really a positive culture, a loving culture, and we want to serve people. Because I think with even with Chef, he, he's not worried about representing Vincenzo. He's not worried about elevating his own business. He just want to help people. And he's also kind of got the other restaurant tours in the city kind of opening our eyes. So I mean, we can do some stuff too. We can Oh, help. well, that's so, nice. Yeah, so that's, that's the bigger future plan for this whole Mills for Woodstock is that – it's not just one restaurant involved. It's mm-hmm. all of them involved, even business owners, you know, giving money. And we have a bigger kind of bigger long-term view picture of a permanent location that provides food for low income people every right. day. Uh, they come in, have a meal, sit down, have a meal, cost them nothing because it's been donated. And the people working in that environment are people off the streets or almost homeless, have been homeless, and they need a job skill. So give them a job skill in culinary arts, get them certified, get them out in the workplace, in the marketplace, and use that kind of kitchen ongoing process as a way to catapult people into the society and give back. So there's a bigger future future plan and vision for Mills for Woodstock, but we'll see what, what God has in, in store for that and how it works out. Yeah. So you have touched on a challenge that it it just perplexes me. I don't understand it. I don't understand the root causes of it. I don't understand why, you know, it's always they, right? Why why they can't fix it, (laughs) right? (laughs) Not stone, but, uh, but, but this, uh, and again, it's, it's almost cognitive dissonance for me that it would even come up in conversation, you know, within a hundred square miles of where we are, but homelessness or, um, that too, that's a very, that's a, an ongoing challenge. And thank God we have people like you that feel like we can and should be doing something about it. Um, and we have people like me that don't have the first clue. I did, but this too was a challenge in, in Cherokee County, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's growing. Um, there's a, you know, mm. it, it's already kind of goes with, with their shelters. And we have uh, from first of all, Woodstock, we have a group that goes down to Atlanta every Saturday and been doing it for two decades to serve oh. the homeless in Atlanta. Right. Um, there's a big, big population in Marietta. Um, but there is a pretty good homeless contingency mm. here in this county, South part, North part of the county. Hmm. And what we do as far as at Woodstock, the care ministries, we provide a fair amount of benevolence help to people that come in and ask for help um, as rent or utilities. And we are all kind of, we walk through them for the process. We want to see that they have an end goal in mind, that they're actually trying mm-hmm. to work and yeah. get their ways, you know, financially <clears throat> stable. But with that, there's hundreds of people in our area that are just one paycheck away right from on being homeless. You know, any, any suburban lodge or any extended stay hotel is full of people that is one more, one week away or one day away from being homeless. And so there's some talk, some uh, collaboration in the county about some you know, transitional kind of housing in the northern part of the county and, and that, that type of thing. And people, sometimes you talk to people, they're like, well, we don't really want that type of population in our area and we're like, well, the, that type of population is here. Yeah. They're already area. here. They're here. <laughs> and so what are we going to do about it? You know, we're going to, we're going to love them. Are we going to care for them? Um, not that we want to create a huge homeless population in Cherokee County by, you know, drawing them here, but it's, it's, it's what do we do? And as, as a, as a Christian follower of Jesus Christ, I thought we were supposed to take care of the needy and help those that need help. Right. And, you know, you, when you get involved in someone's life, it's kind of ugly, it's dirty, uh, sometimes you have success for people. Sometimes you don't. You know, sometimes you see people moving forward in their life and their financial needs and they can be, become financially stable. And that's the goal is that they're not always dependent on someone else to take care of them. But once they get into a point in their life, they can support themselves and they get further in their life and they're successful. Then they can turn around and help someone else. That can be a real lever, I yeah. would think. So it's kind of yeah. getting that kind of that breaking that cycle of poverty and breaking that cycle of where they've been in their life, maybe a couple of generations worth and breaking that cycle that they can break away from it and their future looks different and their kids' future looks different and then they can help someone else. So that's the, that's the end goal of helping someone that's maybe on the verge of homelessness or homeless 
at the time. Okay, so the objectives, the plans, the the vision for for you and, and your team is much broader than the specific uh, conversation around meals for Woodstock. This is sure. a, this is a great point of focus, but a lot going on. So, as a, a a radio host for the Business Radio X Network, we have a lot of business people come through here. We have a lot of accomplished people come through, and I am often quite impressed with a person's ability to lead. To, to, to generate results with and through other people. Uh, I'm impressed by that, but I am in absolute awe <laughs> of someone who can do all that with people who don't collect a paycheck from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what insights, if any, do you have perhaps to offer other people who find themselves in a similar situation where they are leading largely volunteer forces mm-hmm. and don't have the same points of of leverage it, it, it must have its own set of challenges and i'm sure its own set of rewards oh yeah yeah i think in my own life and career in the church working at, at first Baptist, i've been working there this is 22 years in june but i've always led volunteer teams um and then same thing with mills for woodstock you're leading volunteer teams we just did a big push for single moms we had about a hundred people volunteering to do some yard work and different things and processes. And I think the the key point when you're leading someone that you're not paying, that can, they can say no, or they can wake up that morning and say, ah, I don't want to go in. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a volunteer. I don't want to be there. I think the passion that you display to them, first of all, the vision and the mission of what you're trying to accomplish to get them excited about it and then being passionate about it and being right there with them, you know, right there with them serving right there with them in, in the nitty gritty of doing what you're called to do um, to get them excited about what they're doing and seeing end results in their life. I think serving others has a great reward in it for everybody, no matter what belief system you come from or if you go to church, don't go to church, whatever that looks like. But always, if you serve someone else, it has a different reward set than yeah. doing it for a paycheck. You know, if you, if you see the results and see people thriving in their life that you've invested in, that you've challenged, that you've come alongside of, and you've served at a different level. It's a, it's a different kind of reward that you have to see them being successful. And so yeah, I think it's, that's the that's the I think key process is that passion in your own self to lead others to do what you believe that they should be doing themselves. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned be right there with them in it. It, it. I could see where it would not be terribly effective to get it all set up and then say, okay, go forth. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be over here. That's right. <laughs> I, where I think I would be pulled to do that. Maybe that's a human thing, right? <laughs> I, I've set it all up. I've got it, but it, that's different. It, oh, yeah. It, and, and, it's, and, it, and sometimes that is appropriate in a, in a more of a business setting so that you can go grow the, <laughs> grow the business. All right. So before we wrap, I want to do a couple of things. One, I'd like to sort of speak to the different constituencies, both those who need the help, both the, those who could contribute, plug in and, and provide some help. I'd like to give a little bit of clear direction on the next step okay. for a, you know, for a stone Peyton who might be out there listening, right? To something like this. Uh, so I'd like to, do, and then I want to make sure that we provide some um, um, points of contact yeah. so that we could do that. So in whatever fashion you'd like to accomplish those two things, I'd like to do that before we wrap. All right. So, yeah, I think for the for the mills for Woodstock, it would be um, you can reach out to me directly uh, at First Baptist Church Woodstock. Um, I'm the only Doug on staff there. Um, only community pastor named Doug. Um, to giving, I was just looking up on the website. It's WoodstockGA.gov. On their website, there's a direct link for Mills for Woodstock um, that you can give to directly to help the process and the uh, continued efforts of having I'm making sure it's right there. Yep, there it is. Link on their Woodstock. GA.gov website. You can give right there, donate money oh, straight to okay. Mills Woodstock so we can buy the supplies, buy the, buy the items we need to continue this process to it. And then as far as serving, get involved, you can get in contact with me. You can stop by Vincenzo's in downtown Woodstock, talk to Chef, Chef Nikki. Uh, Chef's the owner of the restaurant. Nikki is his, his uh, right hand lady that works there. And um, they, they've had people come by all the time asking about it. They see the tent like you did. Out there. Right, right. See people giving out food, what's going on here. And so we have people walk by. They have people come in the store all the time asking, what's, what do you do? What is this about? And so it's really neat to have them be able to explain it to people and get them involved. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, Doug, it has been an absolute delight having yeah. you in the studio. I hope you'll consider um, coming back from time to time, uh, keeping us absolutely. updated as, as this effort continues to 
to unfold. And we're certainly going to do what we can to try to continue to help you get the get the word out. And um, yeah, we have business people come in here every week, sometimes multiple times a, w- a week. And so let's um, let's stay connected and see if we can't find a way to at least let these folks be informed. But my Definitely. experience has been, and I've been around some pretty accomplished business people over the years. Yeah, you know, sometimes some of the finest folks you ever want to meet, and 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 they want to find a way to plug in. Mm-hmm. So let's let's absolutely do that. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us this morning, man. All right, until next time, this is Stone Payton for our guest today, Doug Whitney with Meals for Woodstock, and he's the community pastor over at First Baptist Church of Woodstock. And uh, I think I'll go to the olive oil store later today, but I, maybe I'll go grab a bite to eat at Vincenzo's. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, everybody. (laughs) Bye-bye.